This is a HeadGum Podcast. The following is a series of roundtable interviews from the cast of People of Earth, a new TV show created by David Jenkins about a support group for alien abductees. In these interviews feature actors Wyatt Cenac, Michael Cassidy, Alice Wetterland, Oscar Nunez, and Devine Joy Randolph. In this first interview, we do a one-on-one with Devine Joy Randolph and talk about her role on the show and also some nerdy traits about her. Enjoy this special BGM podcast extra on People of Earth over at New York Comic Con. So first of all, I want to talk about your character on the show. Can you please give us a brief description of who she is and what are her motives on the show? Yeah, sure. So my character's name is Yvonne uh, Watson, and Yvonne is a postal worker before they had made me a Mary Kay lady. But the pilot that you will see, she's a postal worker. Um, And Yvonne was in a relationship. We believe that she's from probably New York City or like an urban area for sure. She was in a relationship. She calls it quits and moves to Beacon. And then shortly after being in Beacon, she has these encounters and these experiences with aliens, which she's like tripping out over because she's like, if they say it in the show that she's like, I only thought this happened to white people. Like, (laughs) what did, why me? You know what I mean? She's from the city, like about her business. So it's very funny. So for her, she's more problematic about it and very like, okay, so I'm here to learn and get educated, to get a way to get them to stop right so she feels almost like it's a threat for her and it's not really a thing for her of whether she believes it or not and then is into it or not but she feels threatened by it and so like she takes drastic measures to ensure her safety i will say that uh which is hilarious and interesting and like you'll see you know she's not from this area not from this world and it what i like about it is that it's number one i don't think you've seen a character like this on television before um number one there aren't this many uh curvy actresses number one number two curvy actress that's doing comedy but not in a stereotypical way because it's sci-fi right and so even in her approach, even when she feels threatened, right? It's not your stereotypical, like, angry black woman or, like, the sassy, like, no, no, no. She's very, like, a human being, a real woman that's like, listen, I already got one bad relationship. I came here to do better. Now this happened. I don't have time for it. Like, this needs to stop. But what's beautiful about it, too, and something that I'm very proud of is that You're going to see her navigate the world and you're going to see her develop friendships and even a romantic relationship with probably the least common person that you would think of the group. But it's really beautiful and uh, I saw clips of it and felt really great about it because right at the end of the day, it's just two human beings. And it's just beautiful because it's crazy because it's 2016 and yet you're like it blows your mind you're like we've never seen this so for me that's what i take great pride in and also of like not judging it right and i think that's something that speaks to you know you guys and stuff like that of like who says that we can't like whatever we want to like do you know what i mean like and i love that there's that freedom and that she's a little timid about it But you see her getting involved and at times getting excited about it. Like she's like a little detective almost about it. That she wants to figure out like the whodunit. Which is really, it's just, for me, it's it's just beautiful to watch, right? Because I feel like there's so much judgment, you know what I mean? In women. Because I kind of feel like sci-fi is kind of like a male-dominated thing. So number one, a woman. Number two, a woman of color. It's just like, yeah. Why can't she be into stuff like that? And what I like about the show in general, there is no judgment. You know, so it's like, yep, we put it out here. And those who believe in it will love this show. Those who are kind of like, 
timid about it will love the show because my character is kind of that voice for that. So, yeah, really, that's what I was drawn to it because the vastness of it that you get all parts. So our outlet is Black Girl Nerds. That's our community. We want to know what is a geeky or nerdy thing about you that nobody knows? Um, I'm really, I don't know if this is nerdy or like OCD, but when traveling, like, uh, because we're the fly a lot for work and stuff like that, like I pack a little bag that's so that I can have like the most comfortable experience possible. And so I'll have like little, they look like uh, basically like, the, you know, when the little kids have like the little slippers, like the Elmo ones where they put their feet in. Like I love like little, anything adorable. So like I love wearing onesies or, but like with the feet in them. I think Target released a line and I bought them all up. Okay. So it's like, yeah, that I like, like, and it was like Paul Frank or something like that. And it's like red and blue striped. And then the feet of it is like the monkey of it that are on the feet. Or I love like slippers or like a little booty. I just, I think it's so cute. I love wearing that. And so when I'm flying, people are like, what? Because I'm like decked out in a onesie with like footies and like the little furry booties. And I'm comfortable and I feel great. Isn't that the best, just relaxing? Yes. Why do these girls... Yeah. Listen, number one, best experiences ever watching movies on planes. I think it's because you like have no distractions. So I'm just like, I'm crying. I just saw she before, or me before you, bald. It was amazing. Or I don't understand why women go to the airport and they have like dress like this, heels like sweetie. I know you are not comfortable and you're wearing Spanx too. What's going on? But they, they do it and that's what they want to do. Thank you. Thank you. Our next round table interview features actors, Michael Cassidy and Wyatt Cenac. Wyatt plays Ozzy Graham and Michael plays Jonathan Walsh. Um, I don't know. That's a very good question. I, I think I here's the here's the truth. I I am not uh, a trained actor, so I don't do a ton of preparation. I kind of show up and hope I don't fuck it up. And I think that was my thing going in was just don't fuck it up. Uh, and thankfully, it's not. It's not like a Daniel Day Lewis type of situation, <laughs> right? If I had to go up against that guy for like uh, for the part of Lincoln, I mean he's gonna get it regardless. I think no one's gonna take the chance. Because he's taller. That's you. And, and Lincoln was tall. Yeah, yeah. and he can yeah. grow a beard. He can grow a better beard. Oh, okay, better beard. Better and beard. Tall. Yeah, that's the only reason I wouldn't get cast as Lincoln. Also, my voice can't go that high. I uh, yeah. So. I don't know if I answered your question. I think we went on a weird tangent about how Daniel Day-Lewis is an actor and I'm a guy who gets lucky. Yeah. yeah. And the beard, we talked about beards. We did, yeah. And beards like, are a big part of the show, so that's important that we There's talk. a lot that's of facial hair. Like, yeah. No. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. Look at me. Why, you told me in a previous interview that David had told you that he'd sort of had you in mind when he wrote this. Right. So I wanted to know, did learning that, did it make you feel differently about approaching the project? Mm-hmm. Sure, there's always some hesitancy when somebody comes to you and is like, I know, I think I know you. <laughs> so there's, and I think this would be perfect for you. There's always a little bit, bit of hesitancy with that. I mean, I think for me, Greg Daniels being involved and Greg was somebody I knew and had reached out to me about it. I, I, I Having worked with Greg in the past... I think that's what gave me a sense of security that, okay, it's a fun idea and Greg's involved. Regardless of if somebody says, I know you and I can write your voice exactly how it should be, they're never going to nail that. And also hopefully they're going to be open enough to just giving you enough runway to make it your own. 
a little bit out of left field, but we write for a Harry Potter website. Right so on. I need to ask you what your houses are and what you think your characters' houses would be. Sure. <laughs> You're familiar sorry. with that sort of thing. Sure, sure. Sorry, okay. that's a dope question. Yeah. Do you want us to do it or do you want us to do it for the other person? No, either one. Because if you want us, I mean, <laughs> you're asking him to put himself in, through the sorting hat mm-hmm. as though he is both wizard and sorting hat. Like, <laughs> that true. doesn't happen. That's true. You don't get to go in and say, I want to be in Hufflepuff. Someone else puts you in Hufflepuff. Right, sure. Then, by all means, sort each other. Yeah. So, why it is the evil one? What's the evil one? Slytherin. Slytherin. Why it's definitely Slytherin. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Death potions yeah. all day. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't make you a muggle, right? No. You have a house. I'm not and muggle. What's the what's the other question? Well no, what, now I got what is character. Character, yeah. But you're not like a Draco Malfoy. You're like a No, I'm just one of those that like I know death spells. I I know I'm for you know, I know I'm like I can do them at a party. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna break them out when I've got an That's issue right. like, oh, I didn't I didn't get upgraded. Hey Delta, death potion. Yeah, no, that's not <laughs> you. Yeah. Right, right. I'll uh what is Hufflepuff actually? I just like it as a as a word. I'm a Hufflepuff. You are. <laughs> We're loyal. We're finally getting our hero. You don't hear a lot about Hufflepuffs. They're kind of like the underrated house, and <laughs> everyone thinks we're particularly good finders. All right. So I think he's taking that one. I just saw that face. Like, I know he's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I love being Hufflepuff. Uh, we wait. get underestimated a lot. So wait, it's Slytherin Hufflepuff. Gryffindor, Gryffindor and the Ravenclaw. What is Ravenclaw? It's the smart one. General basic summary. It's the smart one. He's like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You Your can, facial yeah. <laughs> You can be, I guess you can be Hufflepuff. Yeah, Hufflepuff. I can be. <laughs> <laughs> the next roundtable interview is with Devine Joy Randolph, who plays Yvonne Watson and Alice Wetterlund who plays Kelly Grady. We genuinely, and I say this because sometimes you'll be in productions, you'll be like, how you doing? <laughs> you know? And it's like, great, I'll see you later in the scene you do. And you go to your trailer or whatever. We genuinely, and it's rare, and it's really cool, and it works to our benefit, we really like each other. We like hung out, we would go to dinners, we would celebrate people's birthdays. It wasn't enough time. I felt personally there wasn't enough time to spend with everybody that I yeah. wanted to because we would, you know, we, everybody wants to get to know each other one on one. I don't believe that there was any person in the cast who who was like out of, you know what I mean? Unless they're gone all the time, like Cassidy. Uh, <laughs> like even Benny and him, like we all loved each other so much. We, we yeah. did escape rooms together. We. Yeah, I mean, it was but like, genuine. Like I can't emphasize that. Enough. Yeah, genuine. yeah. Sorry, like I'm gonna say it later on about other shows and other movies, and you're gonna be like watching the interview, and I'll wink, and I'll be like, "No, I like them." But like, sorry, this is real. Follow up on that. You guys did an escape room together. This is her category. Oh, okay. Go in, Alice. Please explain. So, <laughs> uh, so when we're shooting the pilot. Wyatt and I were talking about doing an escape room, but Wyatt never actually got to, he was so busy all the time. And there's quite a few escape rooms in Toronto, though. So the first time we went, I believe we went with Brian Husky and Oscar and Tracy Chimo and Michael Cassidy and I. And uh, we got super hooked. So Cassidy and I actually did five different escape rooms with various people in the cast. And then the last one we did, we had almost, like, you didn't get to go, you didn't get to go, why didn't get to go? Uh, there's a couple other people who didn't get to go, but everyone else was in there. And it was like, there's an escape room called um, it was Casa, Casa Loma, mm. and it's an old castle. And they actually have three different escape experiences, and that involve actors, very complicated, and then you need to have at least 12 people to <laughs> And we got out, almost yeah. got out, and oh, it was so exciting! Yeah. So is there anyone who is super adept at it? Like, who's the best at escape? I'm, the, I'm the most enthusiastic, but I am not the. I'm not. Who's the best? Anna be is amazing. Yeah, that um, makes sense. Anna was incredible at it. Uh, I would say, you know, who else was really good? Bjorn was really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because when you do an escape room with your cast, we're all joking around all the time, and this is what you didn't get to see, but you can imagine it. We're like, what? We are like on set, it's like we're just so, we're joking, we're doing bits, we're yelling and laughing, and then we get into the escape room, and it's like, 
you know, and I'm like, hey, these guys, just look right here at the clue, please. And, like, we're just so <laughs> intense. so serious. Now we're on a drama. Like, there's no, yeah, there's no <laughs> amount of, like... You're like, whoa, I love you. Well, what is your skill? Thing. Figure out your skill and do that. You know, just, like, so intense immediately. So, so the million dollar question is, did you guys escape? We did. We got out. There was 30 seconds to go, and there was really loud beeping, and I, the last clue, I was, like, so close. I actually did score the whole clue, but, uh, but it was, like, 10 seconds after. But 10 seconds, I mean, no, that's basically. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Next time. Can you tell us a little about Lee Can you tell us a little about Lee Tell us a little about your characters. Yeah, so, uh, so in this, the pilot you guys saw, I was a Mary Kay lady. So we, in like rewrites and stuff like that, uh, we changed her to being a postal worker. So when you see the pilot on Halloween, um, I'm a postal worker, which I lo- I really like being a Mary Kay lady, but it's so specific of a postal worker. Like, they see everything. Yes. Uh, so David used to, Jenkins, the writer, his first job was a postal worker. And so, did you know that? Yeah, first job, he was like 19, it was a postal worker. And so I talked to him a lot about it, and it's like a very weird and specific job. I remember right before I came here, my computer crashed, and I went to Apple, and there was literally a 28-year-old black female postal worker waiting for her phone to get fixed, and I literally was like, <gasps> and I literally I was like, man, 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 please, please, please. Oh yeah, and we exchanged numbers. Her name is Diamond, and we, I, is Diamond? yeah, and I text her every once in a while when we were shooting, and like, she taught me about like how the first nine months are brutal, and like, you're on probation, you wear hand-me-downs, until you like yeah you get this huge bonus after nine months and then so those most of those costumes that you're seeing yeah. are hand me downs so like your clothes are everything she was like do you like my shorts and I was like yeah girl they're great like whatever yeah. it's like supposed to work for shorts yeah. and she was like no these are mine because I met her the day after she oh just which is epic but um yeah so my character is you know she's a postal worker she sees everything she knows everything that's going on and yeah I don't I don't know I mean, if there's she like really, a pragmatism to it all. yeah I think that she doesn't like incredi- really there's like this like you're not the most warm no you know that's um, a very nice way of putting it. You know what I mean? Not like it's the like a, most warm. But a very useful person to have around, I would say. Yeah, very like, okay, it seems like she this, just, this, like, this, this, and this. thinks of things that the rest of the characters wouldn't think of in a, in a pinch. Which, yeah. you know, there's not, like, tons of action scenes, but there yeah. are also. I don't, ah, uh, it's up. <laughs> God, we're going to make this tell us. Secrets! <laughs> yeah. um, I play Kelly Grady, who is a temp at the funeral home. So, you know, I would love to have been a, a Mary Kay lady or anything. No, I am. Um, yeah, Kelly doesn't have a lot of direction in her life. And her main objective is to, like, get a boyfriend. But... But, like, a good one. But a good one. She dates a lot. She goes on a lot of dates, I think, out of boredom. I think she's sort of somebody who is not really satisfied with life in general. And uh, she had a... She's like a background of like, you know, the kind of person who went to a really good school. There was a lot of expectation up front and then just nothing. You know, she like maybe got a weed card and then things didn't really work out. Right. And so she's just in Beacon and she's kind of biding her time till something happens to her and something does. Well, one thing I really do like about your character and I think it's something really sweet about both your character and the ensemble is that like, Right? Like, she kind of uses therapy to, like, almost like we're her girlfriend. She's like, guys, so, like, I met another guy. And we're, like, legit in it. Like, okay, so does this one have a job? And, like, is he nice? Like, did he pull out the chair for you when you... What I think is so lovely. I love that duality, though, of our show, that there is, like, that very human thing. And then there's, like, oh, yeah, you forget for a second, like... Oh yeah, this, this is about. They're all here though about aliens. <laughs> but then we'll literally be like, yeah, "Girl, yeah, yeah. was he nice? Yeah, yeah. What did you wear?" Like, yeah. it's, it's hilarious. Super leading, and there's like a lot of. Um, it's interesting because you do see the bickering in the pilot, but <laughs> yeah. there's a protectiveness. It's I a think, lot of too, heart, you know. Yeah, like with Richard. Brian Husky's character. Yeah, we're all just, just like so annoyed uh, by him all the time. The characters are, but then. You know, when something happens to him, we are a little bit like, let's get yeah, back. This we is are there for him. Yeah. That's a very close one. I like that. Part. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys.
The next roundtable features Oscar Nunez, who plays Father Doug, David Jenkins, co-executive producer, writer, and director, and Greg Daniels, executive producer, writer, and director. So, David, I wanted to ask you because it was something that I, I talked to a lot about just now and just about before. He said that you had them specifically in mind. That's right, yeah. Why, why, was there something particularly about why it You know, I don't, I, I pretty, pretty much from the inception of it, like, I, I'd never, it's, this is freakish that all of this happened. I had never met him. I was just a big fan of his. And uh, I think, um, fan of his from The Daily Show. And it helps me to write something if I know kind of what the voice of the characters are. So I do kind of have in the back of my mind people that I'm writing for. Um, and why it just makes sense. I think he's a very good everyman. He brings a lot of um, kind of journalistic integrity to it from his stuff on The Daily Show. And I think for this show, you're looking for someone who kind of is like an update of Bob Newhart in a way, where it's like they're a very reasonable person in a very unreasonable situation, and they're just trying to process people that are kind of off the wall. I thought it'd be very fun to watch him do that. It's hilarious that you said Bob Newhart. Yeah, because his cadence. It's like, oh yeah, I see. <laughs> kind of, right? Very dry. And, the, the you know, like, kind of like Bob Newhart spoke like that too. Yeah, but, but, very good but, listener. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I noticed that the pilot was a single camera setup, yeah. and I was, I mean, obviously that kind of harkens back to The Office and all of those inspirations sure. that you guys were talking about, but I was wondering if there was any other reason for that choice. Yeah, I mean, I think for this story, you have to really be kind of out on location in showing places at night, and you want to get that mystery tone, and that's that's squarely in the world of single camera I think I mean, do you feel like there's a big difference moi yeah <laughs> between the two as, a, as opposed to what I mean what else can it be it can't be a right when you're out on location when you're out like that it's, it's that's the animal that you take and I think for this concept the hope was to deliver the audience something that works on a genre level yeah. and on a comedy level so we wanted the production values to be good and cinematic and to welcome the audience in. And I think beyond the pilot and series, it's a really cool looking show. I'm very proud of the work that our directors and our DP did. It looks great. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's probably the, the only other... There's a show out that, that uh, there's nothing else looks like it, and it's called Transparent. And you watch Transparent, you're like... I don't even know what I'm watching. I feel yeah. like I'm eavesdropping yeah. on, like I shouldn't be watching this. I don't know how she does that. But other than her, the, the right behind her is this style, which is oh. what David was just saying. Right? It's very close. It's very, very <laughs> close. Or like it's the office, right? The cell, it's set the bar like really, really high. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, but we can't be shot like a train. We can't be shot like a transparent. It wouldn't work for us, right? Well, think. I think for this, you want to, we have a really good DP named Johnny Cliff. That's he's right. He's worked on like Brian De Palma mm-hmm. films and he's done documentary it ha- stuff. It has a stylized thing. There's a stylized yeah. thing to it. To it, us. it isn't like straight documentary. Right. But you also want to but be able to service that. the genre. That's right. And That's you, right. you also need to do moments of it where you're in a support group thing and you, you need to do the kind of coverage they had on The Office in a, in a different way where you need to get in close. Mm-hmm. And for things to be funny, you need to be able to shoot them quickly. Yeah. Um, and then at the same time, you're doing an abduction in the same episode. So it's a few different styles That's right. in, one, in a given episode. And it makes it very challenging to make and to find directors for and to find actors that can do all three, and we seem to be coming up with those people. I, I had seen and read that, that Conan O'Brien is producing yeah. the show, too. Yeah. I mean, is, is his hand felt in the guidance of the show? David's his guy. I mean, yeah. his hand is felt in the sense that... Uh, he's Go on? A, yeah. He is a huge advocate for the show. He loves it. He's watched, you know, all the episodes that we've got so far, and, you know... He views himself as a protector of work that he thinks is great, which he definitely feels about. 
Can you just guys talk a little bit about on location shooting and you know how how it make, I mean, helps you get into character like, a little bit more as opposed to doing stuff, stuff on set? Yes, Toronto. We shot in Toronto. Yeah. yeah. It's it's harder to shoot on location for everybody. For, yeah. But it's uh, it mixes it up, and we had some really fun locations. The church that you saw there is in a really cool field, and there's a, a farm next to it and a a farmer's market. We we would go and hang out and buy stuff. It's really cool. So um, it's nice to get out. Yeah, it's nice to get out. It's it's good for the characters too. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. I have no reference for this because I've never. This is the first show I've ever made. But do you feel like it changes dramatically? what you're doing with the comedy to be on location this much? It's apples and oranges. It, it, you know, actors show up, everything is set up. We don't do the hard work. It's the crew. They're the ones who are like, oh my God, location. It, it's, it sucks for them. We just show up and we're like, whatever. You know, we, everything's set up for us. I um, think you're being modest. I mean, to, to looking at this and like the honey wagons and it's cool and you're on a set, and it's exciting, but at the same time, it's hard. You're moving around a lot. Your call time for a mystery show is like it's 2 a.m. Yeah, and people complain. They're like, Oscar, do you need a jacuzzi? Do you need your jacuzzi? And I'm like, yes, I do. Because it's part of, I'm used to it. No, I'm just used to it from the office. So the, the crew hates me a little bit. But there's a line. Two grips got electrocuted, Oscar. That's why, that's why the crew no, that's what, that's okay. what unions are for. That's what unions are for. That's fine. There's a reason. You're like the Daniel Plainview of comedy television. It really is chilling. If you were to interview them, they might have a different view of me, but I... Uh, I'm done! I'm done! <laughs> That's what you said when the grip got electrocuted in your hot tub. Yeah. You're a monster. We had to get clean out the water, empty the water, all the water. That was the first thing we Any more questions? Shooting. I wanted to ask Oscar about going from the office to this. The cast is great. It's the first season. People are still, like... Look, it's a great job. It's not we're not digging ditches, sure. but it's not easy. It's it's hard. The hours are hard. We the hours are weird. It's it's um, first seasons are always hard logistically and for the line producer, the scheduling and all that. So it's a little hard, but we had some fun and we'll have more fun if the show gets picked up. But the first season is always hard for any show. Even on the office, you know, you've you've got your fingers crossed for the first six episodes or so. You don't know if you're gonna. Yep, the first season, I think we were six or seven shows in. I was still babysitting and waiting to, you know, so you don't know. By the second or third season is when you really start like, a lot of shows don't make it to yeah. We started to get our groove towards the end of this one. Yeah. And then it's over. We'll see what happens. But, but, it's a very uh, ambitious show to yeah. make, especially for a comedy. And I think to come in and say like, oh, we're going to do this show that takes all this technical know-how to make. And then at the same time, we're going to keep it loose and have enough time for improvisation on scenes. I think when you're doing something that is technically difficult, you end up losing time for improvisation. That's so, what happens. Yeah. I think that's a big thing that we yeah, kind that, of had to strike when we were making it. It's like, oh, how do we make more room? Because that's what's great about it. Ha- it'll happen. Like the schedules will get... Everything will start running. Each season gets easier. Also... We don't drink as much on set. <laughs> that's in my contract. I'm not going to stop. We are who we are. I don't believe that's in your contract. <laughs> no, I, I wrote it with crayon. Look at the blue crayon that I... Alice and Divine were something that's all about the escape rooms that everybody was doing. So maybe if there's more of that, that all the bonding <laughs> like, I a lot of that. I a escape lot of that. From, from the invitations <laughs> to the escape rooms. It's not my bag. I did too. Alice is really good at it and, and Michael Cassidy. They're both... <laughs> I know. Numbers. Let's crunch numbers and add and divide long division. That sounds like fun. Let's pay $70 for an hour and do math. Yeah. Why? I, I, math was hard when I was in school. I hated math. Why would I? Why? No, I'm asking. Why would I do that? Thank you, everybody. Thank you Thanks, so guys. much. Thanks for tuning in to this BGM podcast extra on People of Earth. To learn more about the new TBS comedy, you can go to blackgirlnerds.com and check out the post by Stephanie Francis called Wyatt Sanaf Beams to TBS with People of Earth. People of Earth premieres Monday, October 31st at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on TBS. The Black Girl Nerds podcast is produced by Jamie Broadnax. Various segments on all podcast episodes are edited by M.R. Daniel and John Bauer. The opening theme song to our podcast is written and performed by Samus. 
Various instrumentals used throughout podcast episodes are created by Samus, Sky Blue, and Shubzilla. You can find our shows on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play Music, and Stitcher. That was a HeadGum Podcast.